Have you ever heard of a Lego? Yes, that thing that when it comes under your feet, it's like it's like this rock, and that's like this. Have you ever experienced the excruciating pain of stepping on a Lego? I know it's terrible. Couldn't imagine that this this that this little Lego piece would be so painful. It seriously brings out every emotion <laughs> that we didn't even know was possible. I know. We all get poked and prodded all day long, poked in the eye by our kids, quickies. You know, we're we're seriously lab rats, especially us as moms, lab rats. Seriously. But jokes aside, our environment is literally affecting us in every which way. So the best way to find out what is actually going on with you is what is getting a blood test done. So you got to work with your primary care physician to get an initial set of lab tests. Now, what are we going to get? At first appointment, this is what I normally do. I go through your full-fledged history, and then I go through the basic treatment plans that work for you, with your individual concerns in mind. Then, then I tailor it a little bit, right? How? By giving you a lab slip to figure out what is actually going on inside your. Body, and again, most insurances will cover these basic tests. And actually, in about ten years, no one's really complained that they weren't covered. So the key is to make sure that you get the right diagnosis codes. So in order to make sure that is a you got a code appropriately, and remember, there is a difference between optimal and normal. Optimal lab tests is what your body functions best at, and normal. Is anywhere where there's like because there's a huge large range, so whatever is in the middle is normal. <laughs> no, I have actually provided in my book. I've provided an entire range that and interventions that you can typically use that I typically use for my patients. So remember, your personal physician may work with slightly different targets and optimal ranges. So that's okay. And they may even have different interventions because guess what? You are unique. So you may require refinement of these recommendations based upon your personal health circumstances. So to get these tests, remember just request them from your doctor because these tests can be repeated By every one or two months, depending on your personal situation. So everybody is a little different. So let's go through these in a little bit more detail. So remember, I prefer a fasting blood test. I feel that that's better for you. I get a little bit more information on that with less pokes that I have to poke you less often. So first, I look at CBC. To see if you are anemic, if you got healing is stressed, you know, then we got to look at, you know, because iron deficiency anemia can be connected to your gut health. It is super important for when that does occur to make sure you optimize your gut health. Then we I do a comprehensive metabolic panel. I look for fasting glucose less than 90 milligrams per deciliter, calcium less than 10 milligrams per deciliter. If a fasting is if fasting glucose is elevated, I look at insulin resistance management, and I really stress insulin resistance management. Then, if its calcium is higher than 10, then I got to be really careful in vitamin D dosing because I don't want to make sure that I throw anything off with parathyroid. And then also remember. You got to make sure to optimize insulin resistance if your if your glucose is elevated. Then I looked at thyroid. So I look at your thyroid stimulating hormones. Ideally, it should be less than 2.5 micrograms micro international units per milliliter. And then make sure you add a free T4, free T3, reverse T3, TPO antibody, and anti thyroid globulin antibodies. Um, but if you know, especially you want to make sure that you add them. If especially if somebody has anxiety, fatigue, hair loss, or other thyroid type symptoms, then add this in regardless of your TSH. So you got to work with your doctor and uh, to begin the combination of T3 and T4 medications such as compounded T3, T4, or natural desiccated thyroid, free T4, free T3, reverse TPO. Remember. Yeah, antithyroid gland antibody all are absolutely necessary. Free T4 should be less than 1.1 nanograms per deciliter. Free T3 should be less than um, so should start be more than 
uh, 3.2 PG per milliliters. Reverse T3 should be less than 10 per 1 ratio of reverse T3 to free T3. TPO antibody should be less than 9 international units per milliliter or negative. <laughs> Antithyroglobulin antibody should be less than 4 international units per milliliter or negative. And um, if elevated, we got to address the root causes because if it's reverse T3 is elevated, it can be due to excessive exercise, starvation diets, stress, or even heavy metals. If the bi uh, antibodies are elevated, then we have is you have to address the autoimmunity. Then we have magnesium. We got magnesium more than two milligrams per deciliter. There isn't a great test to check for exact levels in your blood, but we like to get a sense of where you are and how deficient you are and how much more you need um, to supplement. And I usually supplement if you're less than that, I supplement with 1,000 milligrams per mill of magnesium for about three weeks and maintain at about 500 milligrams per day. Then I always check 25 hydroxy uh, vitamin D. I want your levels between 50 to 80 depending on your individual uh, deficiencies and that's nanograms per milliliters. Then we have to adjust the vitamin D dosage up or down according to the levels because guess what? There are so many multiple ways to dose vitamin D so work with your specific healthcare provider to determine how much supplemental uh, vitamin D you actually will need. So there's so many amazing blood works like that we have as blood levels of, um, you know, we have, then, then we have the, your autoimmune antibodies. So if your ANA is elevated, I want to make sure that you optimize, we, the, then we have to go on a gut approach and we have to figure out what's causing all that inflammation and then help you lower that ANA. Then we have is your B12 is low, then we got to make sure you optimize your B12. And then by uh, usually... You know, I want this less level less than, I mean, more than 500. Then we have is check folate levels. Then what I do is I also check homocysteine levels, inflammatory markers. I check homocysteine levels, which is, uh, should be less than, you know, eight. And then if, if it is higher, then I'll supplement with meth, with the methylated B complex. You know, if you're, um, then I'll, HSCRP, if that's elevated, I check for, you know, I check to see what other things are causing inflammation. So the list goes on and on of all the things that we can do. And this is something that you can simply ask your primary care physician to optimize your health, the healing for inside and out. And then again, those are just the basics. Then if you can go from like allergy testing and all these other things that you can do to help optimize your health and well-being. So I am here for you. Let's do this together. If you have any questions, please let me know. Talk soon.